As the CEO of a public company, a man unexpectedly covers himself in taboo tattoos overnight. A black dragon adorns his left shoulder, a white tiger on his right arm, a kiran etched on his chest, and an azura on his back. His left foot carries the image of the great sage, his right foot, the deity Neza. The grim reaper resides on his waist, the king of hell on his chest, and even a third eye is opened on his forehead. All this, due to the impending global blood moon, a time of great change. Beasts evolve and countless humans become prey. However, those with tattoos find themselves resurrected, endowed with immense strength and the power of mysterious armor. Gu Changqing, who bore no tattoos in his past life, was reduced to the lowest of the low, mere livestock. Now, reborn two months before the apocalypse, he spares no expense to summon top-tier tattoo masters. Standing by the window, he savors the clear blue sky, knowing it's his last chance to enjoy such a sight. When the first day of June arrives, the world will be shrouded in heavy smog. With only two months left until the great change, there should be enough time to build a large refuge. Once the change occurs, even the tiniest blade of grass will become fiercely brutal. There is hardly a place where humans can survive, therefore, in a situation where money is not an issue, constructing an unshakable large-scale refuge and storing a sufficient amount of supplies is a necessity. After about half an hour, Gu Changqing emerged from his bath, stopping in front of the large floor-to-ceiling mirror, reflected in the mirror was a tall figure, a bit over 1.8 meters, along with a sharp-featured, flawlessly handsome face, his body, without a thread of clothing, was perfectly muscled, not too much, not too little, with no hint of discordance, yet, this body would soon be covered in various tattoos, after drying his hair and donning a black sleepwear, Gu Changqing descended the stairs that I in the luxurious first floor hall, a woman who appeared to be in her mid-thirties was cleaning. Hearing footsteps, she stopped her work, turned and asked, young master, lunch is ready. Would you like to eat now? Gu Changqing responded with a light hum, heading straight for the dining room, this woman's name was Wang Rong, she had been brought back as a nanny by Gu Changqing's mother when he was 10 years old, now, after a good 15 or 16 years, she knew Gu Changqing's dietary habits like the back of her hand. Young master, this afternoon, before Wang Rong, who was serving lunch, could finish her sentence, Gu Changqing interrupted her, go ahead. Wang Rong looked surprised, uh. Young master, how did you know what I was going to say? Gu Changqing picked up a glass of milk from the table, sipping lightly. He knew about her gambling addict husband's high-interest debts that they couldn't repay. According to the original story, her husband was forced to jump off a building to his death, Wang Rong, for her worthless husband, had borrowed hundreds of thousands from him, although for him it was a small sum, Gu Changqing believed that such an unrepentant waste deserved to die. Ah! Then young master, I'll leave first. Although Wang Rong was puzzled about how he knew she was going to ask for leave, she didn't ask further. She quickly left in the family car that the young master had bought for her. After Wang Rong left, Gu Changqing dialed a number. Hello. Chairman, what are your instructions? From the other end of the phone, a fawning voice of a middle-aged man was heard. Gu Changqing replied indifferently, find out for me if there's any large-scale abandoned prison for sale in Longjiang City. His parents' Hengyu group, which spanned several sectors, included real estate. The man he was talking to was Wu Rui, the general manager in charge of the real estate sector. As far as I know, there are two, one is in the Gobi area of the western suburbs, with a total area of over 500,000 square meters, which is much larger than Tianan Square in Kyoto. It seems to be a product of the last century, and the current selling price is 700 million. There's another one, that's the one. Gu Changqing interrupted him, the one located in the desolate area of the western suburbs was just perfect. Ah! Chairman, are you going to? Wu Rui's puzzled voice came through. Gu Changqing didn't waste any words, immediately contact the person in charge of this prison, purchase it as quickly as possible, then start construction. The height of the wall must be at least 500 meters, the thickness at least 2 meters, made of reinforced concrete, the ground the same, and the ground and surface must be covered with steel plates. My goal is to build a large scale shelter, with enough supplies to feed a few thousand people for three years, the more the better, you know what to do, right? Wu Rui was a bit confused after hearing this, Chairman, I've done a rough calculation, according to what you said, plus the purchase price of 700 million, it will cost at least another 30 or 40 billion, are you sure? I'm giving you 10 billion, make sure it's completed within 50 days, if 10 billion is not enough, call me anytime. Gu Changqing instructed, remember, build it into a fortress-like shelter for the end of the world, money, is not a problem. To him, money was just a number, not to mention that the market value of Hengyu Group was over 100 billion, just the savings left by his parents were no less than 70 billion. Moreover, after the world's anomalies, the United Nations will introduce a unified trading currency to stabilize the situation. At that time only things like gold will be valuable. Gu Changqing has already planned to sell Hengyu Group and use the remaining money to buy gold at a low price. 
All right, with your word, Chairman, as long as we can invest money without hesitation, I will personally supervise the work, and make sure you see an impregnable fortress for the end of the world in 50 days. Although Wu Rui was puzzled as to why the chairman would spend a huge sum of money to build such a thing, he knew the chairman's character and did not ask more, but directly agreed, did the richest man in Longjiang City need him to teach him how to do things? All right. I will give you a transaction right of 10 billion from the finance department, go and execute it. All right, chairman, I won't let you down. The sooner it's completed, the better. After saying this, Gu Chongqing hung up the phone, having explained the shelter matter, he now waited for the world's top tattoo master to come. After lunch, Gu Chongqing sat down on the luxurious couch in the hall that he was browsing the coolest tattoos that I in the end, he chose 10, Luo Hui, Kailin, White Tiger, Black Dragon, Death God, Azura, Pluto, Skull, Chi Tian De Sheng, Neza, with these tattoos engraved on his body. He couldn't even imagine what would happen when the tattoos awaken after the worlds. Anomalies that he remembered in his past life, those who had tattoos of Qinglong, Kailin etc., were all so powerful, truly standing at the peak of this planet. But among the beasts, there were also existences that could fight against them. On Mount Kunlun, there was a golden thread snake that turned into a Jiao in one year, a dragon in two years, and a golden dragon in the third year. On Mount Amei, there was a monkey king, who was invincible and ruled all monkeys in the world after the worlds. Anomalies, the rulers of this planet were no longer just humans, terrifying beast kings that could easily destroy a city were rampant. I in the early stage, humans relied on nuclear weapons and other powerful hot weapons to deter, and in the later stage, they relied on super tattooed protectors to guard. Super tattooed protectors could also evolve, all beasts had a crystal nucleus in their bodies, absorbing it could strengthen their own super tattoos. I in the evening, a black luxury business car. Slowly parked in the villa's parking lot, the co-pilot's door slowly opened, and the first thing that came into view was a long leg wrapped in black silk, followed by a tall, curvaceous, delicate and charming woman with a head of burgundy hair, dressed in a professional suit. Also from the back seat, a middle-aged foreigner got off. Point two assistants opened the trunk of the car and carried out a lot of tools. Mr. Anil, please. Su Yue stepped forward and made a gesture of invitation to the latter, Anil looked around the environment, then walked towards the villa, the group entered the luxurious villa hall, but Gu Changqing was nowhere to be seen. Mr. Anil, please have a seat, I'll make a call. Su Yue gestured for him to sit, then dialed the chairman's number, after about 10 seconds, the phone was answered, and Gu Changqing's magnetic voice came through, I'm coming down right away. He had just finished working out in the afternoon, had taken a bath, and the AI had already alerted him that four people had entered the villa, therefore, he knew it was Su Yu Wei and the others. All right. After hanging up, Su Yu Wei made tea herself and smiled at the latter, our chairman is coming down soon, please wait a moment. Your offer is worth my wait. Anil waved his hand, speaking in not very standard Chinese. A moment later, footsteps came from upstairs. Ji Yu Changqing, dressed in a black pajama, came down. Chairman. Su Yu Wei greeted him and introduced, this is Mr. Anil, a world-renowned tattoo master. Nice to meet you, Mr. Gu. Anil also stood up and extended his hand with a smile. Nice to meet you. Gu Changqing shook hands with him and sat down on the sofa across from him. Chairman, Mr. Anil, please have some tea. At this time, Su Yu Wei had also made the tea and poured half a cup for each of them, Anil took a sip of tea, then turned to Gu Changqing and asked straightforwardly, may I ask Mr. Gu, what kind of tattoo do you need? Gu Changqing looked up, smiled slightly, I need 10 tattoos. They are, Luo Hui, Kailin, White Tiger, Black Dragon, Death God, Azura, Pluto, Skull, Chi Tian De Sheng, Neza. This. Mr. Gu, are you superstitious? Upon hearing that he wanted these tattoos, even the worldly wise Anil was surprised that he was quite familiar with the tattoos mentioned by Gu Changqing, they were all terrifying existences. Ji Yu Changqing took a sip of tea and smiled, you just need to concentrate and do your best to tattoo me, whether I can suppress it or not, that's my problem. Since Mr. Gu has spoken thus, I won't say much more. When do you plan to do it? Tonight. Gu Changqing seemed somewhat impatient. The next day, early in the morning, outside Gu Changqing's room, Su Yu Wei was waiting. At this time, the door slowly opened, Anil and his two apprentices came out. Sir, how is it? Su Yu Wei asked as she stepped forward, Anil nodded to her, Miss Su, the tattoo of your chairman is perfectly depicted. It's the most focused work I've ever done. Mr. Gu asked me to tattoo you as well. What do you like? I've already booked my return flight. I'll leave as soon as I finish tattooing you. What? Hearing that the chairman also wanted her to get a tattoo, Su Yu Wei was stunned. You must get one. Gu Changqing's stern voice came out. Okay. Hearing the stern voice in her ear, Su Yu Wei reluctantly agreed, on my arm, tattoo a, tattoo a female Rakshasa. Her words were interrupted by Gu Changqing in the room. Ah, this, Su Yu Wei stood there stunned, then said, okay. Let's listen to the chairman. 
Miss Sue, please. Anil gestured. Okay. They entered the room next door. A moment later, Gu Changqing walked out of the room bare chested, black dragon on the left arm, white tiger on the right. A Kirin tattooed on the chest, an Azura on the back, great saint on the left hip, Neza on the right, Grim Reaper on the left leg, Rohu on the right. A skull is tattooed on the back of the left hand, and a god of the underworld on the back of the right hand. That I in the center of his eyebrows, a blood spear was also tattooed, little did he know, the more. Powerful the tattoo, the more intense the pain when the tattoo awakens, this was something he didn't know in his previous life as he wasn't a super tattooist, with these tattoos, he might explode and die that I in his previous life, he wasn't a super tattooist, he only knew that the awakening process was somewhat painful, but now he was ready to take the risk. If he didn't succeed, he would die trying. The night was as dark as ink, around 9 o'clock, Gu Changqing saw off Anil and others. Chairman, why, inside the room, Su Yu Wei had just put on her clothes, looking at the chairman who entered the room, her body full of tattoos, she couldn't understand his behavior. Sooner or later, you will be grateful to me. Gu Changqing glanced at her and turned to leave, after you go back, tell the finance department to give Wu Rui the right to use 10 billion funds. He let her get a tattoo entirely because she had been with him for 6 or 7 years and could be considered a confidant. 10 billion? Su Yuei quickly caught up, hesitantly asking, what are we doing that requires such a huge sum of money? This was not a small amount, so even though she knew the chairman disliked being questioned about his affairs, she still asked. Ji Yu Changqing never liked to explain. He simply said, don't ask what you shouldn't. Understood, Mr. Chairman. Su Yuei had been with him for six or seven years. She knew what kind of man he was, cold and ruthless, but his treatment of his subordinates was impeccable, time flew, and before they knew it, it was Labor Day on May 1st. Breaking news, the richest man in Longjiang City has inexplicably spent a fortune to buy a large prison in the western suburbs and seems to be building a large shelter. According to expert estimates, if the current scale continues, it will take at least 30 to 40 billion to complete, maybe even more. As the prison began its grand construction 20 days ago, many online media outlets were reporting the above news, with many anchors even live broadcasting from the scene, with thousands of workers working day and night shifts, the project was already two-thirds complete in just 28 days. At this rate, it would be finished in just over a week, ordinary people just thought these tycoons had too much money to spend and didn't consider the possibility of an impending disaster. Ji Yu Changqing didn't care about public opinion. Over the past month, he had been focusing on physical training that I in his previous life, he had heard that if one's physique was too weak during the tattoo awakening, there was a possibility of death. He had to get himself into the best shape possible within these two months. Today, after working out and taking a shower, Gu Changqing sat on the living room sofa, staring blankly at the strange mark on his right palm. He strongly suspected that his ability to time travel was closely related to this gray mark, but no matter what he did, he couldn't get rid of it. Ding! At that moment, a message came through on Gu Changqing's phone. He picked up his phone and saw a deposit notification for over 90 billion. Just then, Su Yue called him. As soon as he picked up, her voice came through Mr. Chairman, did you receive the money? Gu Changqing hummed in affirmation, pleased. You did a good job. Come back as soon as possible. This. Mr. Chairman, I. I resign. Su Yue hesitated, but ultimately spoke up, all she saw in him now was decadence.I in addition, the management at Hongyu Group, which had just bought out the company, had asked her to stay, she was a competitive woman and had no desire to stay with a man who could sell his parents' legacy and spend billions on a useless place. Alright, your last month's salary will be transferred to your account. Gu Changqing said lightly, hanging up without showing any emotion.Su Yue's departure did not affect him at all, everyone has their own ambitions, if you leave now and want to come back later, that's just wishful thinking. Boss. At this moment, a tall and sturdy man in a black suit and slicked back hair walked into the villa from outside. Ji Yu Changqing picked up his teacup from the coffee table, took a sip, and looked up to ask, How did it go? Ha! Boss, don't you trust me? Zhang Hu chuckled, sat down across the coffee table, poured himself a cup of tea, took a sip before continuing, Our hundred or so brothers have all been tattooed with the demon tattoo. And these brothers are all orphans with no attachments, absolutely loyal to you, boss. As he spoke, he lowered his voice, boss, is the end of the world coming? It wasn't strange for him to think so, otherwise, why would they be building such a large shelter in the western suburbs? Right. Gu Changqing didn't hide anything from him, because this was his sworn brother, who had once taken a knife for him and almost died. Holy shit, no wonder you're making such a big move, boss. What does that have to do with the tattoo? Zhang who was stunned but did not doubt Gu Changqing's words. Ji Yu Changqing gave a mysterious smile, you'll find out when the time comes. Zhang Hu was itching with curiosity, chuckling, I can't wait. Gu Changqing picked up the cigarette box on the table, handed one to Zhang Hu, lit one for himself, took a deep puff, and said casually, Little Hu, to avoid any accidents, you take some people to supervise the project in the western suburbs. 
Best to finish within 10 days, and then spend a few days transporting various supplies. Zhang who lit his cigarette, nodded forcefully, got up and said, then boss, I'll head over there now. With that, he left quickly after he left, Gu Changqing made a mysterious phone call. Little Gu. The noise you've been making this past month is really something. As soon as the call connected, an old voice came through that he had spent a fortune to build a large shelter, making it almost nationally known. You're too kind, Mr. He. Gu Changqing politely responded, then got straight to the point, I want to buy 1600 billion in gold. Can you help, Mr. He? Hmm. What do you need so much gold for? The old voice hesitated. Could you not ask, Mr. He? Gu Changqing said, directly transferring 10 billion to the other party's account. No one knew better than him that these funds would severely depreciate once the disaster hit and a unified currency was issued. All right. I'll help you. Perhaps seeing the dragon coins in his account, the old man who had just been questioning him now readily agreed. Thank you, Mr. He. Can you get it done within a week? I can, no problem. We'll exchange gold for money on the spot. Great, I'll treat you to dinner sometime. After a bit of small talk, Gu Changqing ended the call. Time flies, and we find ourselves on the 28th of May at in Longjiang City, located in the western suburbs. A massive sanctuary, costing nearly 10 billion and covering over 500,000 square meters, stands like a small city, presenting a significant visual impact. The solid city wall, over 600 meters high and about 30 meters thick, is made of reinforced concrete. Both the outer and inner surfaces are covered with 40 centimeter thick steel plates. At regular intervals, wind turbines stand tall on the wall, above, the sky is covered with an electric grid to prevent attacks from ferocious birds. An unknown number of solar panels are fixed on the city wall, not only the city wall but also the ground inside the sanctuary is made of reinforced concrete, with heavy steel plates covering the surface and the bottom, the world has changed dramatically. Everything evolves except those without tattoos. Creatures like rats and ants have become extremely dangerous, inside the wall, buildings stand tall everywhere, providing living space for tens of thousands of people. Oh my god! What an enormous structure! What is the richest man in Longjiang City planning to do by building such a sanctuary? I heard he sold the Hungyu group. Could it be, the apocalypse from books and movies, is really coming? Apocalypse? Ha, huh, how could it be? He just has too much money to spend. As for selling the Hungyu group, it might be for some other reasons. Right, we can't understand the thinking of the rich. Maybe it's just for fun. Outside the sanctuary, a crowd of live streamers and people who have traveled long distances to watch the spectacle are gathering, looking at the enormous structure in front of them, everyone is utterly shocked. Miss Su, given your relationship with Gu Changqing, do you really have no idea about the inside story of the sanctuary? Inside a luxurious business car, a beautiful woman with an air of elegance is talking to Su Yiwei, who is sitting next to her. This woman is Lin Shuiyao, the heiress of one of the five big families in Beijing and the person behind the purchase of the Hengyu Group. She is tall and curvy, with a noble and elegant temperament, and a flawless, charming face. Su Yiwei shakes her head with a bitter smile, boss, he really didn't tell me anything. If you know him, you should know what kind of person he is. He would never share his plans with his subordinates. I definitely know Gu Changqing. I've dealt with him more than once. He's indeed a difficult man to figure out. Lin Shuiyao ponders, as far as I know, the supplies that were transported in a few days ago, if properly stored, could support at least 10,000 people for more than three years. Why would he do this? Not just her, many conglomerates in the Dragon Nation are deeply puzzled by this, but none of them thought in the direction of the apocalypse, however, even if they knew, it would be too late to do anything, just then, dust rises from the distant ground as over a hundred military jeeps escorting a luxurious business car drive towards them, each military jeep contains four people, including the driver. They are all dressed in black suits, wearing black sunglasses, strong and robust, with cold expressions. Here they come. Everyone, look, this should be the convoy of Gu Changqing, the richest man in Longjiang City. The live streamers at the scene quickly point their phones at the approaching convoy. If there was a broadcaster who set the place ablaze, it would undoubtedly be one named Xiao Tuan Tuan, with hundreds of thousands of viewers in her live stream, ignoring the multitude of broadcasters, the convoy, surrounded by the crowd, halted outside the massive steel gates. At this moment, the heavy gates slowly opened. A middle-aged man in a business suit briskly emerged and climbed into the large luxury business vehicle, following this, the convoy entered the shelter, inside the vehicle, Chairman, Wu Rui, can guarantee with my life, that this shelter, living up to your expectations, has absolutely no hidden dangers. Wu Rui sat down opposite to Gu Changqing, smacking his chest as he guaranteed, now you should tell me, why did you build it? Zhang Hu poured him half a glass of red wine, chuckled and said, of course, it's because the end of the world is coming, right on June 1st, Children's Day. What? 
Wu Rui, upon hearing this, showed a hint of hesitation on his face, Zhang Hu downed the wine in his glass, lit a cigarette for himself, and laughed, believe it or not, I trust the boss a hundred percent. If you believe too, you'd better bring your family in these next couple of days. This, Zhang Hu opened his mouth to speak. Ji Yu Changqing sipped his wine and lightly said, no rush, you have a day to consider. I believe. Wu Rui gritted his teeth, I will bring my family over tomorrow. After all, June 1st was fast approaching. If it were true, it would be a blessing in disguise. If false, it would have no impact. Next, Gu Changqing, led by Wu Rui, toured the shelter that cost tens of billions, the sources of power included wind turbines, solar panels, and 50,000 large generators, with a storage of more than 300,000 tons of oil underground the protective measures were carried out to the extreme, many places were dug several tens of meters underground. With a mixture of concrete and alloy steel plates for protection, the only worry here was the power shortage of them. Electric grid covering the sky, allowing ferocious birds to break in, there were also a few factories, such as clothing, food processing, and daily necessities production. The materials for production were also stored in large quantities here, there were also some farmland and vegetable areas. A variety of seeds were stored in large quantities. As for meat, at that time, they only needed to hunt the mutated monsters. Their meat was very delicious, but the amount stored in the freezer was also Enormous, after touring the shelter, it was already evening. Ji Yu Changqing personally inspected almost every important area and was generally very satisfied after a thorough tour, the group arrived at the largest villa in the shelter, today was the 28th, Wu Rui did not stay but went back to explain the situation to his family. Ji Yu Changqing, however, had no intention of leaving. The gold worth 160 billion had been transported in yesterday, now everything was ready, just waiting for the early morning of June 1st to arrive. The wealthiest man in Longjiang City, has invested a huge sum of money to build a large refuge. Domestic financial groups all thought he built it for fun. No one thought about the impending disaster. Even if Gu Changqing openly said it, few would believe it. Today, on May 31st, at exactly 11 o'clock at night. The refuge was brightly lit, but it seemed very quiet. On the sky terrace, Gu Changqing was having a casual chat with Zhang Hu. The night sky was dotted with stars, and the moon hung high. It was so calm that there was not a single sign of what was to come. Boss, I'm so excited. Zhang Hu took a sip of tea, his excitement was beyond words, he lit a cigarette and took a deep breath. The era of chaos, the countdown begins. Gu Changqing revealed a wicked smile, took out a cigarette and put it to his lips, Zhang Hu lit it for him. Zhang Hu was also an orphan. When Gu Changqing was nearly kidnapped at the age of 17, it was Zhang Hu who risked his life to protect him. Since then, Gu Changqing has treated him like a brother. At that time, Zhang Hu was only 16 years old, and he was willing to risk his life for him. Boss, I regret not being able to get a batch of arms. Zhang Hu said regretfully. Gu Changqing said with a smile, it's useless to us. Is that so? No wonder you didn't get it, but you did have a lot of alloy cold weapons made. Zhang Hu had no doubt about Gu Changqing's words. As the two chatted, time passed quickly. In the blink of an eye, it was already 11.55. At this time, Wang Rong brought up a plate of fruit snacks. Her husband committed suicide by jumping off a building, and there were no children in the family. It seemed to be her husband's problem. When she came back some time ago, Gu Changqing had her tattooed as well. Now in the refuge, there were only Wu Rui's family of three, as well as 108 brothers under Zhang Hu's command, and all of them had tattoos. Young master, have some fruit. It's getting late, you should rest. Wang Rong placed the fruit plate next to the tea table and whispered. Gu Changqing picked a grape and put it in his mouth, and said lightly, tonight is a sleepless night. Wang Rong didn't understand his meaning, and asked, should I go to bed first? Gu Changqing nodded, go ahead. Wang Rong responded and went downstairs. Boss, it's 58 minutes past. Zhang Hu was excited, lit a cigarette, took a deep breath, and stared at the countdown on his phone. Gu Changqing also exhaled lightly. The new era was now in a one-minute countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Zhang Hu was counting down. Boom. Crack. As he counted down to one, suddenly, in the sky above, a blood-red lightning bolt lit up, seeming to split the entire planet's atmosphere, followed by a thunderous explosion. Damn it. Zhang Hu was startled and jumped up, letting out a shocked cry. At this moment, not only him, but all 7 billion humans on Earth were terrified by this thunderous sound, and many people with heart disease even died. The enchanting blood light illuminated the entire hemisphere's night. When its light disappeared, the originally bright moon was now as red as blood, illuminating the entire hemisphere's night, emitting a strange light. Ah! Suddenly, Zhang Hu held his head and screamed, rolling on the ground, ah ah! 
Boss, my head feels like it's going to explode, the tattoo on my body is so hot, like it's going to break out, ah ah ah. His eyes were bloodshot, holding his head tightly, banging against the ground, and constantly moaning in pain, as if this could alleviate his pain. The black tiger tattooed on his back and the demon king tattooed on his chest, seemed to have a powerful force that wanted to break out of his body. Unable to bear the pain, he fainted. Puff! Just as Gu Changqing was about to ask, he suddenly coughed up a large mouthful of fresh blood. Damn it, is it so violent? Gu Changqing staggered, his mind was filled with eleven violent and unruly spiritual forces, as if they were going to tear his head apart, his eyes were filled with blood, and he couldn't help but let out a low groan, finally he couldn't help but let out a loud scream, and his head hit the wall hard. At the same time, the black dragon on his left arm, the white tiger on his right arm, the Kirin tattooed on his chest, the Shura on his back, the great sage on his left buttock, Neza on his right buttock, the grim reaper on his left leg, Luoho on his right leg, the skull tattooed on the back of his left hand, the underworld god on the back of his right hand. The blood spear tattooed on his forehead, all exuded an intense heat, and a surging power was rampaging inside him. Ah! Gu Changqing could no longer bear it, rolling on the ground, blood pouring from his eyes, his bones cracking, his body covered in cracks, oozing bright red blood, in the blink of an eye, he became a bloody man. The blood spear on his forehead emitted a bewitching blood light, and his skull split open because of it. In just a few breaths, Gu Changqing was on the verge of death. Roar! Inside him, the roars of the black dragon, white tiger, and Kirin suddenly echoed, shaking his flesh and blood, causing a large amount of fresh blood to flow out. Am I going to die? At this moment, Gu Changqing was very desperate, he seemed to see a black dragon coiling in front of his blurry eyes, a white tiger roaring, a Kirin swallowing the sky, a death god looking down, a Shura laughing cruelly, a great sage and Neza mocking, a skull laughing strangely, an underworld god looking at him with contempt, and Luo Ho looking down at him like an ant. Sure enough. I can't bear it. Gu Changqing smiled bitterly, blood gushing out of his mouth. He had lived a second life, full of ambition, but he didn't expect this to be the end. With a strong sense of unwillingness, he closed his eyes weakly. Hum. However, at this moment, the strange mark in the palm of his right hand emitted a faint gray-white light, which entered his body and mind. A miraculous scene occurred. As the strange mark in his palm lit up, Gu Changqing's life fluctuation, which had fallen to the extreme, not only stabilized in an instant, but also began to recover rapidly. Tattoos all over his body were now flickering with different colors of light. Hum. Hum. Hum, then, eleven tattoo phantoms emerged from his body. They were cold, brutal, bloodthirsty, evil, but in the end, they all returned to his body, as if they were willing to submit. The night was dark, shrouded in smog, but the blood moon hung high, its seductive light unabated, throughout the world, even the smallest grass evolved in an instant, growing several meters high, its toughness and sharpness easily piercing human bodies, roar. In the shelter outside the Gobi Desert, where one couldn't see their hand in front of their face, ferocious roars echoed, red and green eyes dotted the night, mutated scorpions, insects, and lizards seemed to suffer greatly during the mutation, constantly emitting sharp and high-pitched roars, those who kept pets at home were stunned. The sudden mutation of their pets led to a surge in their sizes. They looked more ferocious than tigers, but rarely harmed their owners, even during the mutation, they gained intelligence and remembered who had been kind to them, even more so, when their owners were in danger, they would bravely help them, killing their way out of the dangerous situation the world fell into endless chaos and fear that night. From animal farms to zoos, one beast after another broke out of their cages, roared to the sky, located humans by scent, tore them apart, and feasted, roar. In a zoo in Longjiang City, three national treasure pandas, towering at 20 to 30 meters high, let out roars that shook the entire zoo, when they saw their milk dads and milk moms being killed by the mutated beasts, they roared in anger and rushed over, tearing them all apart, the vegetation was also mutating. Trees that were usually a few meters high suddenly grew to dozens or even hundreds of meters. As time passed, more and more glowing eyes appeared on the wall of the shelter outside, densely packed, making one's scalp numb, crackle. Crackle, fire sparked on the electric net that covered the entire shelter. Mutated mosquitoes and insects rushed in like moths to a flame, the 100,000 volt electric net was not something these newly mutated mosquitoes, insects, and birds could withstand, those with climbing abilities, like lizards, were also electrocuted and fell off the 10 meter high electrified steel plate, this shelter, for now, was absolutely safe, after an unknown amount of time, the 108 brothers with demonic tattoos woke up one by one, hiss. What a strong power. My god, this power, it's amazing. So this is why the boss let us get tattoos? Thank the boss. After waking up, they felt the power flowing from the demonic tattoos on their backs, spreading throughout their bodies. 
They all showed disbelief, when they tried to use the power of the demonic tattoo, a set of demonic armor instantly covered their bodies, soon after, Zhang Hu also woke up on the observation deck, hmm, where's the boss? Looking around and not seeing Gu Changqing, Zhang Hu frowned, then gasped, what's happened to my body? He had a black tiger tattoo on his back and a demon king tattoo on his chest, the two terrifying powers intertwined within his body, trying to use the power of the black tiger, boom. Zhang Hu's eyes widened got a cool and unparalleled black tiger armor covered his body, with tiger patterns like blood vessels flowing on the surface, is there such an operation? Awesome, it's so cool. He was truly stunned, then, he tried to use the power of the demon king tattoo, hum. Suddenly, the black tiger armor evolved into a stronger, cooler demon king tiger armor got a pair of wings with a strong sense of science fiction and tiger patterns emerged from his back, with a slight vibration, he shot into the sky. He used too much force and almost hit the electric net above, damn. It's so cool, it's out of this world. The power brought by the Demon King Tiger armor shook Zhang Hu for a hundred years, looking down from above, he saw his brothers gathered in the square, with a gentle flap of his wings, he landed here with a bang, Tiger brother, you're so cool. The brothers in their demonic armor came up, removed their helmets, and their faces were filled with indescribable excitement, indeed, it's cool. Have you seen the boss? Zhang Hu also removed his helmet, looking excited as he asked them, they shook their heads, saying they hadn't seen him, Tiger Brother, is the boss a prophet? Lin Feng, the head of the team, said in a low voice, he's amazing. Ha! Following the boss is always right. Zhang Hu dispelled the armor and said, you guys wait here, I'm going to check the boss's room. In the central villa, on the third floor of the master bedroom. Ji Yu Changqing had just washed the blood off his body in the bathroom and was drying his hair, the tattoos on his body, after awakening, were like living creatures, giving off a tremendous sense of oppression. Ji Yu Changqing put on a black suit and looked at the strange grey mark in his hand, knowing that it was what saved him, when his consciousness was dissipating, he clearly felt it emitting a strange energy, controlling all eleven of his tattoos, what's your background? Gu Changqing muttered to himself, feeling extremely curious about the mystery of this mark, now, even without using the true power of the tattoos, his physical strength was incredibly strong, even armor-piercing bullets, he felt, could be caught with his bare hands, with a thought, the blood spear tattoo on his forehead emitted a seductive blood light, then the tattoo disappeared and turned into a weapon nearly two meters long, like a spear or a lance, in front of him. The weapon was covered in blood patterns, giving off a fierce aura, what a fierce weapon. Feeling its terror, Gu Changqing was very satisfied, and then urged the Azura tattoo, hum. His body flickered, and a set of dark red armor covered him, black dragon tattoo, hum, black light surged, and the azura armor on his body changed, covered with a layer of black dragon patterns, with more features of the black dragon, and the helmet also turned into the shape of a black dragon head, giving off a more violent and fierce aura invisibly, white tiger tattoo. Hum, a white light surged behind him, and 36 white tiger flying knives, about 20 centimeters long, with sharp edges and tiger patterns, appeared. They hovered quietly behind him, all as if they were part of his body, hmm. Can I only use the power of four tattoos at a time? Gu Changqing was surprised to find that he could not urge other tattoos, immediately, he dispersed all the tattoos, urging the great sage tattoo, boom. Suddenly, a terrible power rose from within his body, and the majestic image of the great sage appeared behind him, with a violent power surging within his body, Kirin tattoo, hum. Immediately, Gu Changqing was covered in a black flame Kirin armor, and his power surged. At this time, Gu Changqing found that he could not urge other tattoos again, immediately, he dispersed the Kirin armor and the great sage image, death god tattoo, hum, with a single thought, a dark aura of death enveloped Gu Changqing, followed by the appearance of the Grim Reaper suit. A black robe, draped with a cloak, a mask of the Grim Reaper, and eyes flickering with crimson light. The power of death surging within him seemed to come from the depths of hell, skull tattoo. Hum, in the palm of his hand, a long scythe with a skull motif emerged, exuding an eerie aura, after activating them, he could no longer use other tattoos. Ji Yu Changqing dispersed them and tried to activate the Luoho tattoo, puff. Immediately, a mouthful of old blood spurted out. With his current physical state, he was actually unable to activate it, Gu Changqing was amazed. Luoho, the demon ancestor, was truly in a different league from the other tattoos, underworld god tattoo, boom. A burst of powerful force exploded from within his body, covering his surface with a layer of grey underworld patterns, flowing with a subdued grey glow, Neza tattoo, hum, as the underworld god tattoo disintegrated, Gu Changqing underwent a drastic transformation, turning into the awakened Neza from the demon child descends, both righteous and evil, two words, very cool. Gu Changqing knew that his tattoos were only at the first level and were not invincible that I in his previous life, many super. Tattooed practitioners had cultivated to the ninth level. 
their terrifying power could level a mountain with a mere wave of their hand. Next, Gu Changqing started exploring the characteristics of various tattoos. The white tiger tattoo, when activated alone, also appeared in the form of armor. With Gu Changqing's current physical strength, he could not withstand the addition of triple armor. The intensity of his azure armor and black dragon armor was too high. Either one alone was stronger than Zhang Hu's double armor. The night was vast and encompassing, above the refuge, a vulture as massive as a passenger plane was circling. Its cold, blood-red eyes were locked onto Gu Changqing and his companions on the observation deck. What does this monstrous vulture want? Zhang Hu squinted his eyes, focusing on the vulture circling above in the night sky, squawk. As his words fell, the vulture opened its beak and surprisingly, a beam of energy shot out from its mouth, directly aiming at the electric net, bang. The beam hit the electric net, but contrary to expectations, it did not tear a hole in it. It merely shook it a bit, leaving it unharmed. Huh. This is the world's strongest alloy net, and it also has a force dissipating device installed. Wu Rui came up laughing at this moment. Damn it, you scared the hell out of me. Zhang Hu exhaled in relief, he had genuinely thought a huge hole would be blasted in the net. Can these beasts actually spit out energy? Lin Feng, the team leader, was quite surprised. They can do more than just spit out energy. Give them some more time to evolve, and they'll be able to use some powerful abilities. Go get some weapons from the armory. It's our time to hunt next. Gu Changqing discarded the cigarette in his hand, looking at the vulture circling outside, I'll take care of this beast. Okay. Everyone nodded heavily in agreement and proceeded to head out in a grand manner. Boss, can you fly? If not, I can handle it. After Zhang Hu spoke, he simultaneously stimulated his two super patterns, Black Tiger and Demon King. With a hum, he put on the winged Demon Tiger armor. Fly! Can't mental power do that? Gu Changqing put on his Black Dragon helmet and with a whoosh, he flew towards the heavy doors of the refuge, each super pattern awakening would bring a host a great amount of mental power. The mental power brought by Gu Changqing's 11 super patterns was vast and terrifying. Really? As expected of the boss, I'll go get an alloy machete first. Zhang Hu flew towards the weapon warehouse. The super pattern could transform into armor, but not weapons. I in a few breaths, Gu Changqing arrived in front of the iron gate and pressed the switch, the red and black azure dragon armor, with black dragon patterns crisscrossing on the surface, exuded an aura of brutality. With a thought, the blood spear super pattern on his forehead awakened, transforming into a blood spear in his hand. At this time, the iron door had opened a crack wide enough for one to pass through. Ji Yu Changqing, holding the blood spear, walked out through the crack, squeak. Squeak, roar. With his appearance, hundreds of sandy rats, scorpions, and tigers, all the size of a tiger, locked their bloodthirsty, excited gazes onto him. They roared and rushed towards him, as if competing to seize their prey, boom. A dull roar was heard, and sand flew everywhere. Gu Changqing's figure disappeared from his original position, splatter. When he reappeared, the blood spear in his hand had already penetrated the head of a giant sand scorpion. Then, a terrifying force exploded, blasting the sand scorpion's entire head to pieces, whoosh. Whoosh! Whoosh several nearby sand rats opened their mouths wide and pounced. Plop Gu Changqing moved at an extremely fast speed. With a slight movement of his figure, the light of the blood spear flashed, and the heads of the six sand rats that had just pounced in front of him were separated from their bodies, their bright red blood splattering all over the ground, his super patterns, although only in the first stage, were all created by Anil, the world's strongest tattooist. The mental power and the vast strength that surged during each awakening could kill 90% of the awakened. If it weren't for the gray marking, his palm, Gu Changqing would have undoubtedly died, roar, behind him, a sand tiger nearly 2 meters long opened its mouth wide and went straight for Gu Changqing's head, whoosh, Gu Changqing moved horizontally, reaching the top of the tiger, and with a thud, he crushed it to the ground at the same time, six sand rats on his left rushed over, emitting sharp cries, plop. The blood spear swept across the sky, with blood red lightning flashing on it. As it swept across, the six sand rats exploded and died, each of them dropped a milky white crystal core the size of a fingertip. Ji Yu Changqing was very familiar with the hardness of these crystal cores, otherwise, he wouldn't have killed so brutally. Boss, I'm here, that vulture seems to be running away, you go after it. After Gu Changqing had slaughtered dozens of mutant beasts, Zhang Hu finally rushed out with an alloy battle knife. I'll leave it to you. Gu Changqing took to the air and chased after the vulture, boom, Zhang Hu was extremely fierce, with the aura of a tiger and the power of a demon king coursing around his body. He charged into the horde of mutant beasts with his knife, slaughtering them like cutting vegetables. Don't think that the mutant beasts are weak, it's just that his super patterns are too strong. Kill! 
Just as Zhang who had killed a few mutant beasts, 108 brothers in demon armor swarmed out and joined the slaughter, whoosh, above the sky more than 2000 meters high, Gu Changqing moved at an astonishing speed, furiously pursuing the fleeing vulture, the vulture turned its head for a glance and felt a great threat from the human chasing it. Its intelligence was not inferior to humans, and it ran desperately, not daring to confront him, however, the distance was closing quickly. If this continued, it would be caught up within a minute, the vulture squawked anxiously, spitting out several beams of energy from its mouth in an attempt to hinder the pursuit but to its horror, the human chasing it easily raised his hand and shattered the energy beams it had spat out. Damn it, how can this human fly and be so strong? The vulture cursed in its heart, its body trembling, whoosh. Crack suddenly, the vulture's feathers stood on end. When it turned its head, it was terrified, what came into view was a wildly flashing blood spear. In the blink of an eye, it was close at hand. Plop before it had time to react, the blood spear pierced through its neck. I won't accept this. The vulture's massive body plummeted, filled with unwillingness, and it closed its eyes powerlessly. The force of the blood spear, from the moment it pierced its neck, shattered the bones throughout its body. Ji Yu Changqing flashed over and landed a heavy punch, effortlessly blowing up the vulture's carcass. Immediately, blood filled the sky. A crystal core the size of a baby's fist came into view. An early stage mutant with such a large crystal core, if given some time to grow, will become a major disaster for humans. Gu Changqing took the crystal core and murmured as he returned, among the mutant beasts, there were also those that were very powerful and had infinite potential just after mutating, this vulture was one of them, but at this stage, Gu Changqing was an absolutely invincible existence any mutant beast that encountered him had no power to resist, in the darkness of the night, a black cat three times the size of a tiger was carrying a woman on its back. It was moving at an astonishing speed towards the refuge. Little black, faster. The woman on the back of the black cat was pale. In the black night of the Gobi, it seemed as if countless eyes were staring at her, this woman was the popular live streaming host, Little Tuanchuan, she had survived until now because her pet cat had mutated, now, she only wanted to enter that refuge, no matter the cost that I in her eyes, the only safe place in Longjiang city now was that refuge, Zhang Hu's eyes widened, he said, just awakening two of my tattoos almost cost me my life. At that time, I really thought I was going to die. If there were one more, I would undoubtedly die. No wonder, boss, you stopped me. How did you survive with so many tattoos? He was only envious, not jealous, just now, awakening two tattoos almost took his life that he couldn't imagine how he could withstand that kind of impact, where his head and body seemed to be about to explode. At that time, he also wanted to engrave a few more, but was stopped by Gu Changqi. Actually, I almost hung up too, or maybe the king of hell didn't want me. The eerie mark in the palm of his hand, Gu Changqing could not possibly tell anyone, whoosh. Suddenly at this moment, a piercing, stone-cracking cry echoed, huh? Everyone looked up and saw a vulture as large as a passenger plane, swooping across under the reflection of the blood moon, with blood-red eyes and fierce aura, hovering outside the electric net. This is the Gobi Desert, home to a variety of animals, lizards, desert tigers, desert mice, rabbits, yellow sheep, stone chickens, jumping mice, wild horses, etc. The most numerous are the desert mice. The night was vast and encompassing, above the refuge, a vulture as massive as a passenger plane was circling. Its cold, blood-red eyes were locked onto Gu Changqing and his companions on the observation deck. What does this monstrous vulture want? Zhang Hu squinted his eyes, focusing on the vulture circling above in the night sky, squawk. As his words fell, the vulture opened its beak and surprisingly, a beam of energy shot out from its mouth, directly aiming at the electric net, bang. The beam hit the electric net, but contrary to expectations, it did not tear a hole in it. It merely shook it a bit, leaving it unharmed. Huh. This is the world's strongest alloy net, and it also has a force dissipating device installed. Wu Rui came up laughing at this moment. Damn it, you scared the hell out of me. Zhang Hu exhaled in relief, he had genuinely thought a huge hole would be blasted in the net. Can these beasts actually spit out energy? Lin Feng, the team leader, was quite surprised. They can do more than just spit out energy. Give them some more time to evolve, and they'll be able to use some powerful abilities. Go get some weapons from the armory. It's our time to hunt next. Gu Changqing discarded the cigarette in his hand, looking at the vulture circling outside, I'll take care of this beast. Okay. Everyone nodded heavily in agreement and proceeded to head out in a grand manner. Boss, can you fly? If not, I can handle it. After Zhang Hu spoke, he simultaneously stimulated his two super patterns, Black Tiger and Demon King. With a hum, he put on the winged demon tiger armor. Fly! Can't mental power do that? Gu Changqing put on his black dragon helmet and with a whoosh, he flew towards the heavy doors of the refuge, each super pattern awakening would bring a host a great amount of mental power. The mental power brought by Gu Changqing's 11 super patterns was vast and terrifying. Really? As expected of the boss, I'll go get an alloy machete first. 
Zhang Hu flew towards the weapon warehouse. The super pattern could transform into armor, but not weapons. I in a few breaths, Gu Changqing arrived in front of the iron gate and pressed the switch, the red and black azure dragon armor, with black dragon patterns crisscrossing on the surface, exuded an aura of brutality. With a thought, the blood spear super pattern on his forehead awakened, transforming into a blood spear in his hand. At this time, the iron door had opened a crack wide enough for one to pass through. Ji Yu Changqing, holding the blood spear, walked out through the crack, squeak. Squeak, roar. With his appearance, hundreds of sandy rats, scorpions, and tigers, all the size of a tiger, locked their bloodthirsty, excited gazes onto him. They roared and rushed towards him, as if competing to seize their prey, boom. A dull roar was heard, and sand flew everywhere. Gu Changqing's figure disappeared from his original position, splatter. When he reappeared, the blood spear in his hand had already penetrated the head of a giant sand scorpion. Then, a terrifying force exploded, blasting the sand scorpion's entire head to pieces, whoosh. Whoosh! Whoosh several nearby sand rats opened their mouths wide and pounced. Plop Gu Changqing moved at an extremely fast speed. With a slight movement of his figure, the light of the blood spear flashed, and the heads of the six sand rats that had just pounced in front of him were separated from their bodies, their bright red blood splattering all over the ground, his super patterns, although only in the first stage, were all created by Anil, the world's strongest tattooist. The mental power and the vast strength that surged during each awakening could kill 90% of the awakened. If it weren't for the gray mark in his palm, Gu Changqing would have undoubtedly died, roared, behind him, a sand tiger nearly two meters long opened its mouth wide and went straight for Gu Changqing's head, whoosh, Gu Changqing moved horizontally, reaching the top of the tiger, and with a thud, he crushed it to the ground. At the same time, six sand rats on his left rushed over, emitting sharp cries, plop. The blood spear swept across the sky, with blood-red lightning flashing on it. As it swept across, the six sand rats exploded and died, each of them dropped a milky white crystal core the size of a fingertip. Ji Yu Changqing was very familiar with the hardness of these crystal cores, otherwise, he wouldn't have killed so brutally. Boss, I'm here, that vulture seems to be running away, you go after it. After Gu Changqing had slaughtered dozens of mutant beasts, Zhang Hu finally rushed out with an alloy battle knife. I'll leave it to you. Gu Changqing took to the air and chased after the vulture, boom, Zhang Hu was extremely fierce, with the aura of a tiger and the power of a demon king coursing around his body. He charged into the horde of mutant beasts with his knife, slaughtering them like cutting vegetables. Don't think that the mutant beasts are weak, it's just that his super patterns are too strong. Kill! Just as Zhang who had killed a few mutant beasts, 108 brothers in demon armor swarmed out and joined the slaughter, whoosh, above the sky more than 2000 meters high, Gu Changqing moved at an astonishing speed, furiously pursuing the fleeing vulture, the vulture turned its head for a glance and felt a great threat from the human chasing it. Its intelligence was not inferior to humans, and it ran desperately, not daring to confront him, however, the distance was closing quickly. If this continued, it would be caught up within a minute, the vulture squawked anxiously, spitting out several beams of energy from its mouth in an attempt to hinder the pursuit but to its horror, the human chasing it easily raised his hand and shattered the energy beams it had spat out. Damn it, how can this human fly and be so strong? The vulture cursed in its heart, its body trembling, whoosh. Crack suddenly, the vulture's feathers stood on end. When it turned its head, it was terrified, what came into view was a wildly flashing blood spear. In the blink of an eye, it was close at hand. Plop before it had time to react, the blood spear pierced through its neck. I won't accept this. The vulture's massive body plummeted, filled with unwillingness, and it closed its eyes powerlessly. The force of the blood spear, from the moment it pierced its neck, shattered the bones throughout its body. Ji Yu Changqing flashed over and landed a heavy punch, effortlessly blowing up the vulture's carcass. Immediately, blood filled the sky. A crystal core the size of a baby's fist came into view. An early stage mutant with such a large crystal core, if given some time to grow, will become a major disaster for humans. Gu Changqing took the crystal core and murmured as he returned, among the mutant beasts, there were also those that were very powerful and had infinite potential just after mutating, this vulture was one of them, but at this stage, Gu Changqing was an absolutely invincible existence any mutant beast that encountered him had no power to resist, in the darkness of the night, a black cat three times the size of a tiger was carrying a woman on its back, it was moving at an astonishing speed towards the refuge, little black, faster, the woman on the back of the black cat was pale, in the black night of the Gobi, it seemed as if countless eyes were staring at her, this woman was the popular live streaming host, Little Tuanchuan, she had survived until now because her pet cat had mutated, now, she only wanted to enter that refuge, no matter the cost that I in her eyes, the only safe place in Longjiang city now was that refuge. The blood moon hung high, and the night was as deep as water. Outside the refuge, which cost billions, Zhang Hu was leading more than a hundred brothers, sweeping the beasts under the wall. In the early days of the Earth's anomalies, few beasts could resist the super-patterned ones with armor. 
The number of beasts gathered under the dangerous wall was extremely large, especially the sand rats, which numbered in the thousands, if not tens of thousands. The brothers, bathed in beast blood on their armor, were like demons crawling up from the abyss, their ferocity surpassing that of the beasts, their eyes red from the killing, their alloy swords and knives dripping with blood. In a short while, Gu Changqing returned to join the slaughter. He was undoubtedly strong and unshakable, like a killing machine, capable of killing dozens of beasts per minute. After half an hour, the ground under the wall was stained with blood, and the bodies of the beasts were everywhere. After the slaughter, they began to collect the crystal cores on the ground and inside the beasts. Boss, that was awesome! Outside the heavy iron door, the only entrance and exit to the refuge, Zhang Hu returned, his armor covered in beast blood, as if he was still not satisfied with the killing. Gu Changqing looked into the distance, but it was unclear what he was thinking. Boss, what's wrong? Zhang Hu, seeing him silent, asked with a puzzled expression, with our strength, is there anything that can make us feel wary? Gu Changqing withdrew his gaze and said calmly, desert army ants. It's not much of a threat. Ah! Yeah. Isn't that a product of Africa? Zhang Hu was puzzled, we rarely see them in our territory. Don't forget, this used to be a prison. In the last century, to prevent the prisoners from escaping, a batch of them was imported from Africa and bred on this Gobi Desert to deter the criminals. Even though it's been nearly a century, whether they still exist or not is hard to say. The smell of blood here is so strong, it might attract them. Gu Changqing said calmly, just in case, let the brothers collect the Golden Beast Crystal Cores as soon as possible. If the Desert Army Ants do appear, it will be more beneficial than harmful to us. In his past life, he had heard that a few months after the Earth's anomalies, there were Desert Army Ants appearing here in large numbers. The first thing the military did when they found out was to send thousands of fighter jets to cover this Gobi Desert with firepower. Gu Changqing knew about the Desert Army Ants, but still built the refuge here. The goal was simple. Kill them slowly and take their crystal cores to rise quickly. Although their numbers were large, they posed no threat to this refuge at the moment. Hee <laughs> hee. Indeed, the benefits outweigh the disadvantages. With our strength, although we can't eliminate them all at once, we can solve them slowly, take their crystal cores, and rise in the shortest possible time. Zhang Hu chuckled after hearing this, and in a moment, he saw the great benefits. After speaking, he left in a flash, instructing the brothers to collect the crystal cores as soon as possible. Gu Changqing knew deep down that this was just the beginning. The beasts in the city were easy to deal with, but the ones in the mountains and forests were tricky. The greatest threat came from the sea, which covered 71% of the planet. When the sea monsters, numbering in the billions, crawled onto land, that would be the true moment of despair for humanity. In his previous life, all the coastal cities were destroyed by sea monsters, their numbers too huge to resist. Therefore, rise in the shortest possible time. Upon receiving Zhang Hu's notice, the brothers began to collect the crystal cores at the fastest speed. In about 10 minutes, everyone was holding several large sacks of crystal cores outside the gate. The quantity had not yet been counted. Boss, it's a big harvest. Are there really desert army ants? We want to go out and hunt. Zhang Feng came forward with a smile and asked in confusion. Gu Changqing said lightly, the smell of blood here is so strong, if we don't see them tonight, then there probably aren't any. Let's go back and refine some crystal cores. After speaking, he led everyone back to the refuge. Meow. Roar. But just as they turned around, a meow and a roar came from not far away. Huh, hearing the sound, everyone looked in the direction it came from. They saw a huge black cat running at a speed of more than 10 meters per second. And there seemed to be a woman on its back. In a few blinks of an eye, they had come close to everyone. Yo, isn't this the internet celebrity Xiao Tuanchuan? Zhang Hu recognized the woman on the black cat's back at a glance and teased, is this your cat? Huff. Seeing them, Xiao Tuanchuan, who was clutching the black cat's fur tightly, finally relaxed, took a long breath, bit her lip, and pitifully said, brothers, can you let me into the refuge? Don't worry, I won't live for free, I can do chores and sweep the floor, I just ask you to take me in. Looking at them in their cool armor and the large number of beast corpses on the ground, she was very confused, but now was not the time to ask these questions. Her gaze fell on Gu Changqing. She thought he must be Gu Changqing, the owner of this refuge and the richest man in Longjiang City. He exuded the aura of a domineering CEO who had been in power for a long time. Examining him closely, Xiao Tuanchuan found that this man was really charming. I hope you can do as you say, I don't keep idle people here. Gu Changqing was satisfied with her humble attitude, but if she dared to show even the slightest hint of arrogance, he wouldn't give this woman a second glance. I will, I will definitely do whatever Gu Big Brother asks me to do. Hearing his agreement, Xiao Tuanchuan finally let go of her hanging heart and followed them into the refuge. 
on the national road leading from Longjiang City to the western suburb refuge. A Tibetan mastiff the size of a minibus was running at a high speed. There were two women on its back, Lin Shuayao and Su Yue. Whoosh! Just then, a red figure, faster than the Tibetan Mastiff, blocked their way. Roar, the Tibetan Mastiff roared, opened its huge mouth, and pounced at the figure. But the figure was extremely fast, dodged with a slight sidestep, and shouted, Sister, it's me, Lin Chen. I finally found you through phone tracking. The figure that dodged the Tibetan Mastiff's attack removed its helmet. Hmm. Lin Shuiao, who had just been scared, looked closely and her face immediately lit up with joy. She saw a handsome young man, about 18 or 19 years old, wearing Flame Dragon Armor. Is this Flame Dragon Armor? Su Yue looked at him in surprise, unable to believe that someone would actually tattoo the armor of the armor warriors on their body. That's too childish, right? Hearing this, Lin Chen turned to look at her, seeing the armor on her body, he knew she was also a tattoo awakened person, and chuckled, I also have an emperor's armor, sister, where are you going? We're going to the refuge in the western suburbs. You're just in time, little brother, let's go together. Seeing her younger brother also had armor, Lin Shuiao felt a great sense of security. Lin Chen looked down on that refuge and said, it's not necessarily safe to go to that refuge. It's the right choice to follow the military. With me, I won't let my sister get hurt. Su Yue agreed, Shuiao's sister, I think your brother is right. It might be better to follow the military. Lin Shuiao thought for a moment and said, well. Okay then. We won't go. In the western suburbs of the Gobi, most of it has already been greened. With the earth's changes, all plants have grown wildly, no longer resembling the desert Gobi. However, many places are still filled with rolling yellow sand. On a hillside, under the glow of the blood moon, you can vaguely see ants the size of puppies covering the sand dunes in droves. Their destination seems to be the direction of the shelter, covered by an electric grid, the shelter, soaring up to 6 to 700 meters, is brightly lit. The external power supply has long been cut off, and now it is running on the solar panel power inside the shelter. In the recent hunt, a total of 21,321 crystal cores were obtained. Gu Changqing took 5,000, and the rest were distributed among them. After the distribution, they all went back to practice. Through mental power, they can absorb the pure power within the crystal core. In the central villa, inside the hall, Gu Changqing, having removed his armor and lounging on the sofa with his long legs crossed, a playful color on his supremely perfect face, looks at Xiao Tuanchuan standing in front of him. You, other than begging on the internet, what else can you do? Truth be told, Gu Changqing doesn't have a high opinion of these so-called live streamers. Most of them are internet beggars. Of course, there are exceptions for those who are skilled game live streamers. Hence, it's most, not all. Hearing him belittle her, Xiao Tuanchuan felt unjustly wronged. She bit her lip and looked at him, whispering, I can learn. She is dressed simply, wearing a blue tight mini denim skirt paired with a white crop top. Although she is not tall, about 1.6 meters, her figure is quite good. Her ample bosom and curvaceous buttocks have been the fantasies of many men who have watched her live stream. Her round and fair legs are neither thick nor thin, giving a sense of fleshiness. Her delicate oval face is bright and clear, her big eyes like black gems, showing a hint of grievance at this moment. Ji Yu Changqing said indifferently, forget it. No. Hearing this, Xiao Tuanchuan's heart trembled. She knelt in front of Gu Changqing, hugging his thigh, her eyes filled with tears, pitifully saying, the situation will definitely stabilize. When that time comes, I can live stream to earn money for you. I'll give all the money to you, alright? Gu Changqing looked at her with new respect, saying indifferently, you do think far ahead. Although it's chaotic now, the situation will stabilize in a few months, and your live streaming industry will still be hot. Master, why not, let her stay? At this moment, Wang Rong, standing aside and watching, said in a low voice out of sympathy. She is still wearing her nightgown, which perfectly accentuates her voluptuous figure. All right. She's your responsibility now. Gu Changqing let go of Xiao Tuanchuan's chin, then got up and walked upstairs. Thank you, boss. Xiao Tuanchuan hurriedly expressed her gratitude. Her nervous and fearful heart finally calmed down, Wang Rong came over to comfort her, girl, don't be idle from now on. Clean the villa every day, otherwise, the master might kick you out. Thank you, auntie, I know. Xiao Tuanchuan kept thanking her. Inside the third floor of the villa, in Gu Changqing's bedroom, he was sitting cross-legged on the bed, holding five crystal cores in each of his palms, operating his mental power to absorb and refine them. White energy seeped into his body, first wandering around his flesh, bones, and cells, and then being swallowed by the eleven tattoos. Now it's past three in the morning. 
Time flies in cultivation. In the blink of an eye, dawn breaks, and the night recedes like a tide. However, the sky is gloomy, covered with heavy gray smog. In the capital, in the conference hall, outside the hall, three giant pandas, each several tens of meters high, and a fully armed army of tanks are guarding. These pandas from the zoo, with their six to seven year old intelligence, have become as smart as humans after the mutation. And they all know that they are national treasures. They've been well fed and cared for, so how could they not help when the country is in trouble, at this stage, they are definitely the top tier among mutated creatures. Three men, all around 50 years old, with stern and majestic faces, are sitting across from each other at a triangular conference table. They are all looking solemnly at the devastation displayed on the projected screen in front of them. The mutation came too suddenly, catching us off guard, said Long Zhang Gua from the military department in a deep voice. I heard that Gu Changqing, the richest man in Longjiang City, spent billions in April to build a large shelter in advance. Could he foresee the future? Yes, we didn't take it seriously at the time. Did he foresee the future, or was it just a coincidence, said Shenyuan Wang Rui from the finance department, nodding his head. Do you believe that there are such coincidences in this world? This Gu Changqing is not simple. Huang Mengua from the political department said while switching the satellite video to the shelter. Damn! Is that, seeing the scene there, all three of them couldn't help but gasp what came into view was an endless army of ants, each the size of a fully grown dog, surrounding the entire shelter and climbing furiously towards the wall. But when they reached a height of more than 10 meters, they were all electrocuted and fell down by the electrified steel plate. Are there marching ants in the western Gobi of Longjiang City? Do we need to send fighter jets over to bomb them and help Bu Changqing? He might know a lot. If he dies like this, it would be a great loss. Let's see if Gu Changqing has a solution first. If not, then we'll send the fighter jets over. The three decision makers all stared intently at the screen in front of them. First, let's turn on the satellite network so we can contact Gu Changqing later, said Long Zhanghua from the military department. Right. I almost forgot because of the shocking scene. 